Welcome back to another UNC basketball recruiting podcast here on TarHeelIllustrated.com. And if you're checking us out on our YouTube channel, Tar Heel Illustrated, I am THI publisher Andrew Jones. And joining me is our very special guest for the first time, our new basketball recruiting analyst. He's been around this sport for a long time. I think you guys are really going to like his work. His name is David Sisk. He also covers basketball recruiting for the Rivals Kentucky site, works for my friend Justin Rowland and at that site. Done a phenomenal job. And as we continue to improve and get better at THI, we have brought David aboard. And I'm very, very excited to introduce to you David Sisk. How are you doing, David? Man, I'm doing great. I appreciate you having me on. Well, you started with us here a few days ago. Um, I've got, been getting to know you some lately. And and uh, one of the things that drew me to you was your, not just the work that you do, but your extensive history and unique history in the sport. So before we get into some actual recruiting stuff, and we're not going to hit on too many players here, it's more about what you do when you cover recruiting. What is your background? I know, I believe in 1993, you got involved in coaching and you've done AAU stuff. You've coached at the NAIA level, coached in high school. Over 100 kids have gone on to play Division One basketball, several in the NBA, Ron Mercer, and you're going to maybe tell a little story about the team of his that you coached way back in the day. Now, what is your background in a snapshot? Well, I've been, um, I've been uh, around recruiting now for 27 years, and I told you before I came on, um, I guess some of my best times were with the Tennessee Travelers, uh, were really one of the first uh, – the big AAU programs, you know, in the Southeast. And, and I came in at a time after it had been going for four or five years and, and, and started out just uh, uh, carrying the water bottles around and all that stuff. So kind of cut my teeth on it. Uh, a, a lot of those who've been around for a while in North Carolina will remember uh, that program pretty well. We, we would usually go there back in the 90s uh, three times a year. Uh, we'd always start out at the Del Carey uh, shootout with the Charlotte Sonics. Uh, that's usually what we opened up the season with. Bob Gibbons always had a big event there, uh, played in Carmichael and, and, and the Dean Dome. I couldn't count the times uh, on my hands and feet that, that we played there. And then we would end up in July uh, when the AAU Nationals was at Lake Forest and a lot of uh, 17s. A lot of people will remember that. And uh, we actually got in the championship game two years in a row, and that's when everybody was playing AAU. So that was a, a really fun time. Um, and, and like you say, uh, I coached in NAIA uh, at Martin Methodist College in the 90s and uh, got married in 2001, moved to a, a different end of the state, Tennessee, and it kind of got me out of that. I have been involved with some high school coaching, but – been doing this with Rivals. It's one thing I've always wanted to do. So I've been involved uh, uh, with Rivals since 2014. Not a lot of people go from coaching to covering recruiting. What was the bug in you that, that kind of attracted you to this end of the profession? I used to do some journalism stuff when I was in high school. And I'll give you uh, uh, just a little morsel here. Uh, for those who follow the, the, the women's program, Houston Fancher, who's the assistant coach at North Carolina State, the women's assistant coach, we were in high school and we had a radio show on Saturday morning, a football show that his family sponsored called uh, Fancher's Foolish Forecast. And we did that every Saturday morning. I liked it. I didn't play high school, and I mean, uh, football in high school. So we would, uh, on Friday nights, I worked for the local uh, newspaper for the high school games and charted the stats and all that stuff. And, and even, you know, the guy who's editor there, let me do a little write-up about it. And it, it was something I always enjoyed uh, going on to college. You know, my best subjects were – always English uh, in writing. And uh, I had a professor that wanted me even to publish some stuff. I didn't do it, but uh, I've just always enjoyed that. And in the recruiting end of it, you know, I, I got to be, uh, you know, in, in the couple of years back, I'm in my forties and I guess we all hit that midlife crisis. I'm sitting here saying, okay, 
you know, I, I would always wish I would have gotten involved in this area of it, uh, maybe being able to uh, uh, do recruiting analysis or something like that. I reached out to a friend of mine named Rob Lewis, who covers basketball recruiting and, and the basketball program for BallQuest, the Rivals Network at the University of Tennessee. He set me up with Brian Moss uh, at the Memphis site. It was an invaluable time. Uh, I kind of built my brand, learned what to do, how to do it, how to interview, how to write it. And, and you know, I always had, I already had some contacts, but built a lot more. And then it kind of just mushroomed there. So that, that was, like I said, that was a well, probably the best six to nine months of my life as far as just learning. And when I've talked to people who cover both football and basketball recruiting, the answer is very when I ask this question, but when I ask them, what part of the process do you enjoy the most? Some really like to get to the parents so they can really understand the, the, the player, the prospect through the parents. Some just want to get to know the kids a little bit better. Some just want to analyze their games and, and read body language from a distance. How do you, what do you enjoy most about it? What do you use to your strength? as far as getting to understand what it is about a prospect, where they might go, you know, kind of getting a feel for how they might fit into a particular program. I'll be honest with you. I like all of it um, from this aspect. You know, I like the interviews. I like to talk to the kids and the parents. I guess the thing, uh, you know, here for the last two years, I've been working for uh, uh, the Vanderbilt uh, Minnesota and Kentucky sites, all three, plus another job. So I really say I have two full-time jobs. And you probably know as well as anybody, you can cut yourself short. You know, you, you just get strung out. And in doing all those, you you probably don't get the time to build the relationships because you're always just working on the next story. You're trying to get this one. You, you talked about being a swamp today. And I, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. Uh, but I, I'm, I'm hoping with this, you know, with Kentucky and Carolina, we've talked about it. Some of the same players, some are different, but a lot of these people, uh, people around them, you've already built relationships with a little bit. So um, I, I'm hoping that kind of uh, levels itself out, and I think it will. Or you know, I can pay some attention uh, better to some of the things that I need to. When you watch, go to see a kid play for the first time. What do you? Is there something specific that you look for that you want to see in him, or is it just so organic you just allow the kid to play? And for every player, it's just something different. I think uh, a lot of times, guys that are, let's face it, if it's a Kentucky, if it's a North Carolina, the the programs that I'm going to cover, um, obviously, you know, these kids are pretty good. Uh, so a lot of times when they're already, if they already have an offer, uh, you're really trying to break down some details, some brass tacks, kind of see how they fit. But I think more than anything else, you're kind of looking at their recruiting. Uh, I, I will say this, uh, two years ago at Peach Jam, um, Kentucky was in the middle of, of a heavy recruitment for a kid. And I just kind of watched him play, and I watched his lack of motor and his lack of interest, and 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 just, and I'm like, man, there's no way this guy could play for John Calipari. And I'd say the same thing: there was no way he could play for Roy Williams. And if he'd have went to either one of those programs, it would have been a disaster. And so, you know, you you just kind of, you know, you kind of look for things like that. But I find that when you start talking about player comparisons, they say, who does this guy compare to? And it's really interesting how guys can look just alike, be built just alike, but there's no two players that's got the same game. So that, that's the, a fun thing about it, too, is that there's just so much differences in kids. When We're going to get to the Ron Mercer story in a few minutes, but you, you brought up Roy Williams. I think a lot of our, our subscribers and Carolina fans who aren't subscribers but watch us on YouTube – would like to know your impressions about Roy Williams, your thoughts about the program uh, since he came back to Carolina. He's got three national championships, what, five Final Fours, a ton of Elite Eights, and and he is – I think he's won more NCAA tournament games since he's come back to anybody in the nation. So what are your thoughts about him and the program? And kind of maybe something unique about the way he recruits that's a little bit different from other people, if there is anything. 
I go, when you talk about the program, I go back to 19, I'm telling my age here, and I was young, but I go back to Phil Ford. And I remember uh, Tommy Lagarde, and Mitch Kupchak, and you even get to Michael Corrin and Al Wood. And, you know, I'm throwing names from way back there before the shot clock. So we're talking pre-Jordan, pre-Worthy, pre-Perkins. Uh, so North Carolina, and, you know, living in the South, um, to, you know, that was always um, – that was basketball, you know. And same thing I would say – uh, 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 about a Kentucky, you know, I, I people talk about a Duke or somebody like that. You know, it Duke was not, you know, when I started watching basketball, you know, for the first eight to ten years, you know, Duke was not a, not not the uh, near the stature of those other two. So North Carolina is a program, you know, go back to Frank McGuire and all past that, they've always had it. So, and, and then you look at the alumni and look at the just the fan base and the class of the institution and and it's just you know it's just different uh and you know i just know when we would always go over there to tournaments you know you would you would go on campus and go down to franklin street and go and and go into the uh arena there and it was just uh man it just had that feel that it was just an elite elite place so you know when Dean Smith obviously we know how great he was so when Roy has the chance to come back you know a guy like Roy Williams is supposed to be the coach of North Carolina yeah and, I mean it was all and even the first time you know after you know when all the talk when Dean was getting ready to step down it was just like you knew it it's just it's not a place for a guy to to learn their way or, or to kind of learn what they're doing or, 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 or learn on a job on the fly. It, it's just, you know, a guy who coaches North Carolina is supposed to be a legend. So that's my feelings of the program. I mean, it's just as good as it gets. And uh, he's just a, you know, just a tremendous coach does it his way. He's different. He's not trying to change who he is on the court or off the court. So, uh, you know, it, it, it'll be an honor to work for the site and get to cover the program. Okay, the Ron Mercer story. You started to tell, tell me before we hit the record button, so kind of go back uh, uh, on that, the volume of talent that was on that particular team. So my first, I, I come, Charles Benson has been like a father to me. Uh, he founded the program organized it and so I, we I grew up in, in the same town that he was in and uh, would have never had the opportunity to do any of the stuff I, if it wasn't for him I wouldn't be sitting here with you now uh, and so I joined the program in 1993 and we go to uh, we go uh, to Charlotte uh, right off the bat so we'd split the 17s had a tournament in uh, Raleigh and we went to uh, Charlotte with a 15. So C.J. Black, who actually was recruited heavily by Roy Williams at Kansas, he was on that team. And the 17s, uh, they uh, just had an elite team. So the next week, you know, they're playing in the tournament, and I'm on the bench with them, and I'm really not doing any coaching. I'm scouting, uh, maybe make a suggestion here or there, but really scouting other teams and trying to, to help some players with development and things like that. But, but, you know, I'm not a head coach or anything like that. But that first team had uh, Ron Mercer, had Brian Watkins that went to Maryland, Drew Maddox that went to Vanderbilt, uh, Jamichael Mills of Providence, Oliver Simmons of Florida State, uh, a couple guys that went to Tennessee. You could just name them. And there was uh, 10 players on that team that signed uh, Division I scholarships, high majors. In fact, there was a kid that really couldn't get off the bench that quit that I told you, and he ended up uh, signing play at Wake Forest. And I'm not going to mention his name, but it was just so talented. So when you're a guy like me and you're in your 20s and you've never been out of the hills of East Tennessee and you do it one week and the next thing you know, you're talking to Lon Kruger and, 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 and Rick Patino and, and whoever it might be at these other schools, 
I'm just like, man, what happened? You talk about a change in lifestyle. So, uh, you know, like I said, that's something that got me spoiled. But, you know, those guys were, were, were amazing players. You still do some coaching now, so kind of fill everybody in. Well, what? I just kind of do do a little bit in high school here, uh, but I've kind of really phased myself out, not doing any head coaching or anything like that. But I, I try to help some kids out locally. But like I said, I really, really I, – I, I teach school. Uh, so really between that and, and getting in this with arrivals, like I said, I feel like that's, that's too – full-time jobs and I feel like kind of maybe on the bench this will probably be my last year because I I just really want to devote more time to this. Well David I hope our uh, readers our subscribers and those on, on YouTube have enjoyed getting to know you a little bit they will see a lot more of you uh, as we move forward we're going to do a lot of podcasts you do a lot of content you're on the boards a lot I know you've already made a little bit of an impact and kind of a splash with some people some of them are asking me who's this David Sis guy I said, well, just keep coming back to the site. You're going to find out. So we got, uh, by the way, I'm not sure when this is going to come up, but we've got two more surprises here coming up of guys that we're going to talk to. Uh, I've got one set up for 5 o'clock here on Sunday afternoon. I've got one set up for Monday night, and it's going to be two key recruits that everybody out here will know and they'll want to hear from. But they're going to see a lot of you. We're running this Monday morning. We're going to introduce you to everybody. We're already kind of eased in a little bit, but it'll be a grand David Sisk introduction Monday morning, and and I'm looking forward to it. I've enjoyed getting to know you so far, and you do phenomenal work. And I think all Carolina fans, whether they subscribe to THI or not, are going to love your work. So if they don't subscribe, they need to hop on over to TarHillIllustrated.com for just eight dollars and thirty three cents a month. You can have all of David's amazing work, plus everything else we do, covering the football bat and basketball Tar Heels and recruiting. He's David Sisk. I'm Andrew Jones. You've been watching another UNC basketball recruiting podcast with our new and phenomenal, sensational, I could keep doing that if I want to, David Sisk. Thanks for stopping by.